Hey, Coach, what can you say about a guy like Leakey, a veteran who's a three-year starter, been in the program for so long, and, and how he has so openly, wholly accepted his role and takes a lot of pride in the role that he has in this team? He's been unbelievable. You know, one of the things that, that I've said before and I'm going to continue to say, there's nobody in this conference that is a better individual defender than Leakey Black. He should be the defensive player of the year. I mean, he just – Every game, he his assignment is to play the best offensive player on the perimeter, and he loves that challenge. He, he loves that assignment, and he's been fantastic um, on both ends of the floor. You know, you know, from an offensive standpoint, he doesn't shoot the ball very much, but you know, you know, in terms of assists, he takes care of the basketball. He has the best assist to turnover ratio on the team. And for him, just defensively, um, it's just fun to watch. You know, Michael DeVoe is one of the better guards in the country. You know, the first time that we played them, he was the leading scorer in the country. And he did a great job defensively. And now, the second time that we played him, you know, Michael DeVoe is, you know, the leading scorer in the ACC. And, you know, to hold him to one of five field goal attempts and – um um, zero assists and six turnovers. It's just absolutely unbelievable. And uh, he's an elite defender that uh, not only uh, can defend, he can distribute, he can take care of the basketball. And he's a huge reason um, for us becoming the team that we want to become. He's having a great year, and I'm very, very proud of Leakey. Thank you. DJ Morales. Hey, Hubert. So, you know, talking about um, – how, you know, how good a Le uh, John Leakey did defending and, you know, the overall team defensive effort. How important then is it, you know, to have that kind of effort so you can open up your offense? Because it seemed like, you know, Armando and RJ could relax a little bit on the defensive end, knowing they had guys like Leakey uh, and, you know, a strong defensive team effort there so they could open themselves up a little bit more on the offensive end. Well, I don't want anybody to relax on the defensive end. <laughs> um, I know Leakey can really get after it defensively, but I want – everybody to stay locked in on their assignments, on their men, on the defensive end. We don't want to rely solely on Leakey, on his ability to defend his guy and also be in help position as well. And so, um, you know, I, I, I can't say any more about Leakey. He's, you know, at 6'8", athletic, not only he, he's a versatile defender, so, you know, he can guard a perimeter player. We can play him at the – power forward position and he can play a bigger guy and he just has tremendous versatility and so um but I was really proud defensively of, of of our team you know heading into this game you know the area that we talked about the most was transition defense you know Georgia Tech is great in transition on made and missed baskets and so we talked about matching up we talked about how important it was to communicate and talk and I thought we really did a good job as that as well. You know, the times in the first half, they almost scored half of their points based on off of our turnovers. But when they were going up against our set defense, I thought we did a really good job defensively, all of us, not just Leakey. And I was very, very proud of them on the defensive end. And then how do you think about going into Tuesday with guys like Cameron McGusty and Isaiah Wong at Miami? What's kind of the, the game plan for that? Because you got two big scores like that. I haven't even thought about the game plan for Miami. We just got done with Georgia Tech, and I'm trying to um, just look at things that uh, we can get better at. And um, tomorrow or later tonight, and obviously tomorrow will be um, huge in our preparation to prepare to play against a really, really good, talented Miami team that can score and um, you know, from a defensive standpoint, puts you in a lot of tough positions because they have great offensive players and they have great spacing and balance. And they've always been really good using ball screens and creating offense off those ball screens. And so those are things that we're going to have to think about and prepare for the next couple days um, when we go play Miami on Tuesday. Josh Graham. <clears throat> Coach, given the praise you just had for Leakey, and we heard what you said about Armando yesterday. How bullish are you about the team as a collective about what they can accomplish this year? I really do. You know, I, I feel like we're I, actually after the game, 
I was in the uh, locker room and I, and I said, guys, I see it. I said, you guys may not see it or may not see it clearly, but I see it. I said, guys, we're getting better. And we have so much more that we can improve on, on both ends of the floor. But I like where we are. I like how much more, how much we can improve as a team. But I see where we can be. And I, I think it's starting to resonate with them about, um, especially, you know, defensively and how important it is to defend and allow us to get out in transition. But also just the beauty of sharing the basketball. You know, against Virginia last week, we had 19 assists, I think, on 20, 25, 26 field goals. Tonight, we had, you know, we had 20 assists on 30 field goals. One of the refs came to me, it was the latter part of the second half, and he said, you guys have great spacing and movement. He goes, I've never seen have this spacing, and I've never seen teams move the ball and share the ball like you and I've rest a number of games this season I thought that was a huge compliment to the guys and I'm really really proud of them on that end and Steve um, just mentioned to us before you walked in that Armando is the first guy to score 29 in consecutive games since Tyler Hansborough then before that Antoine Jameson and some guy named Hubert Davis so give me a sense for when you saw at practice leading up to Notre Dame in the last two games that this he's playing at that type of level. Well, you know, one of the things for Armando is, you know, he's he is going he's playing at a at a higher level at a higher pace. You know, in terms of Armando, he's so skilled, you know, his ability to score around the basket, he can handle the basketball, he's a really good passer, he's very savvy on both ends of the floor and because he's so gifted at times he doesn't go 100 percent all the time and i think the major the major difference this year compared to the other years is that um his energy and his effort is a hundred percent every time down the floor and so you know on the offensive end whether it's a small guy or a big guy on him he's really outworking that defender to get low post position and catch the ball where he wants to and as a result he's catching the ball very close to the basket where he can just put it in he's going to get fouled get to the free throw line or only take only needs to take one dribble i think something that's really impressive for him is that his free throw shooting has improved you know at the beginning of the year he was struggling a little bit making you know, free throws. Um, now he's stepping to the free throw line, and I think tonight he was he was nine of nine, and so that's an area that he continues to improve on. And one of the things that Armando and I we've talked about is he's he's getting motivated by success. He's seeing him be successful, and instead of saying taking a deep breath and going, "Wow, I'm pr playing pretty good," I'm going to rest on that. It, it is really like igniting a fire inside of him to be even better um, out there on the floor. And it's just really exciting to see um, um, him play so well because he's a guy that has worked really hard on his game in the off season before and after practice. And um, I'm just, I'm really proud of him as well. CL Brown. Uh, hey, Red, I, I was wondering uh, if, uh, Anthony Harris will be back uh, this season, or do you anticipate that um, this is just a one-off with his app? Yeah, he was just unavailable um, tonight. Um, my hope is that he's available in the future, but um, he he wasn't available tonight. Brendan, do you know, do you know oh, how I'm long? Sorry, Sam. Yeah, do you know how long you may anticipate that? And in his absence, who has to kind of fill in those minutes, especially since he had kind of become a, become a good defender for you guys? I don't know how long um, um, Anthony will be out. Um, I haven't thought about that. My hope is is that he's back the next game on Tuesday against Miami, and he was just unavailable tonight. Brendan, go ahead. Uh, hey, Coach, just wanted to – a different sort of logistical question, but tonight was Puff's first action, uh, first game action of the year, first game action in almost a full calendar year. Just um, in terms of his health, when did you sort of get the AOK -okay that he was good to play tonight? And um, just seeing him out there tonight, sort of what's, what's your reaction? I got the AOK -okay for him to play yesterday at practice. <laughs> that 
that's when I got it. And so, you know, I just, you know, um, I was just really happy that he was able um, to get out there on the floor. You know, Puff is the last year and a half, it's been hard for him. You know, he's he's been injured and hurt a lot. He's been in and out of the lineup. He's, you know, putting a string of consistent practices together the last year and a half has been hard for him. And as a result, he hadn't been available to be out there on the floor. And it was really nice when he got into the game, just hearing the ovation for him when he stepped on the floor. I know it's been a long time since he's been out there in the game and it was really fun to watch him out there. And one of the things that I've told him is that he's a great teammate. Even in this last year and a half where he's been out of the lineup, it hasn't changed his attitude and it hasn't changed him being a good teammate. He's one of those guys that celebrates the success of others and he's always has a smile on his face. And um, I told him, I'm, I, I'm just, that's just a, such a huge benefit for us as a team. And I'm so glad that he's healthy enough right now that we can put him out there on the floor because I think with his length and, you know, his, um, his skill level out there on the floor at 6'8", I think he can do some things for us. He's a great offensive rebounder. He can shoot the basketball, and he always plays hard, and he does exactly what the coaches ask him to do. And so I was very glad that Puff was able to be out there in the game, and it was good to see him out there on the floor. And if I can just follow up really quickly, you know, you mentioned you just got the clear for him yesterday. Do you anticipate him being able to progressively handle a larger workload, or, or I guess what sort of a, a tangible impact can he make going forward? Well, you know, we're going to continue, you know, to um, work with him in practice. And, you know, I, as I said before, you know, we have great depth on our team. And I, and I told the guys this in a huddle. I think it was like the last five minutes of the game. And I told them, I said, these are important minutes. I said, guys, every one of you are going to be in big time games and big time situations. And these are these are important minutes. And so. Um, and I said that to Puff, you know, I, I've been in a player and I've been in a situation where you feel like you're out of the rotation and then a week later you're in a game and it's a tie score and you're out there on the floor. And so, you know, in terms of Puff, he always is out there on the floor preparing to be the best that he can be out there in practice. And so when his number is called, he's going to be ready. And um, I look forward to having him out there on the floor more. And um, I'm excited to have him back. Thank you. We've got time for three more, starting with Adam Smith. Hubert, I was wondering, my ears perked up when you said the ref complimented your spacing. Uh, for, yeah. for, for the older nerds like myself on the call, could you tell us uh, what the ref's name or at least tell us his hair? Because I can figure it out if you give me the hair type. No, I, 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 I can't. I can't remember. I was focused, but I, you know, what he said, I thought was really good. It, it, it made me feel good because I thought we were sharing the basketball. All right. Isaiah. I had All right, another Adam, one. Go ahead. Sorry. Sorry about that. Um, Hubert also uh, changing gears. Um, Leaky mentioned that uh, in terms of Armando and just, just the incredible gear he's found that he felt like, you know, he gets some some good coaching from Sean May and Pat Sullivan, maybe some tough love there with those guys. Like, is that something you see out of their relationship? Are they are they kind of hard on him? Or how do you see them uh, urging him on? Well, they coach him. You know, it's, it's a huge benefit to have, you know, Sean May on staff, you know, a guy that was an All-American here, was the MVP of the Final Four in 2005, won a national championship, played in the NBA. So – to every day at practice, listen and learn from somebody that has done it, that has been there before, that has done it at a high level for a number of years at the highest level, that's a huge benefit. You know, one of the things that I love about the assistant coaches is, I mean, you know, you have, you know, the success of, you know, Coach Sean May, but then you go to, you know, 
Jeff Lebo, who played in the NBA, was a head coach a number of different places. And then you go to, you know, Coach Pat Sullivan, who, who's been an assistant coach in the NBA 18 years. And then you go to Jackie Manuel and look at the experience. He was on the 2005 championship team. And then you go to Brad Frederick and then look at the experience that he's had at Vanderbilt and here. And he played here at Carolina. So um, there's a lot to pull from in terms of knowledge, in terms of experience about playing here and what it means to put on that uniform and play on that floor. And I think Armando and all the bigs um, have really taken advantage of um, what Sean May can bring to the table. He's a great coach, and uh, he's doing a terrific job with the bigs. Thank you. Last two, no follow-ups, please. Isaiah and then Gregory. Thank you. Hey, Coach, how was RJ this week? Was there anything during preparation that may have led to you thinking he could have had a game like he had tonight? No, I just, you know, after the game against Virginia, I, I texted him after the game, and I told him how proud I was of him. I think in that game he was like 0 for 10, but I thought he played great. I thought his defense was fantastic. I thought he uh, took care of the basketball. He got us in the sets. He made the right play. I told him he was great, and then he texted me back, and he goes, I'll hit the shots next time. I said, I thought you played great. I said, it's not about shots. And so I know shooting 0 for 10 against Virginia, it was a week. I know he wanted to come out and wanted to shoot the ball better. So he was, you know, 8 of 11, had 21 points. He had another really good game today, but I, I thought he played great, and he was 0 for 10 against Virginia. And so, um, But I know from an offensive standpoint, he's a guy that can really shoot the basketball, and he wanted to shoot the ball better this game. Go ahead, Isaiah, last one. Uh, Hubert, you mentioned earlier this week about how Sean May likes to talk about packing the, your game and whatnot, but you were saying how you shouldn't have to pack it, right? It should always, already be there. Um, Armando mentioned that it's great that they've been able to do these last two performances in the Smith Center in front of your own fans, but it doesn't mean anything if they can't do it and bring their own energy on Tuesday. Um, what do they need to do to take what they've done against Virginia and Georgia Tech and do it against one of the better teams in the ACC Tuesday night against Miami? Well, just continue to do the things that have put us in a position where we are right now. You know, I'm, I'm really big on preparation and process. So in the next two days in our preparation for Miami, like our process has to be great. You know, our energy and our effort and our toughness has to be great in our preparation and in our practice. And I always believe if, if, if the preparation and the practice is really good, that leads to good play. I really believe that that's, you know, over the last couple of games, you know, our preparation, our practice before Virginia and the same thing for Georgia Tech has been really good. And so the next two days, you know, our preparation, our practice for Miami, has to be really good and it has to be with high energy. And um, when you do that, that puts you in a position to play the best that you can play. But, you know, it, you know, we've played a number of games on the road. We're used to playing on the road. And uh, we're really excited about the challenge of playing a really good Miami team on their home floor. And then was there a reason Sean May was not on the bench tonight? No, I just – was unavailable tonight, and um, but he's texted us fifty thousand times, and um, he's. I love having him on staff. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.